climate change is a global problem, and because it's a global problem, it really is one that requires a certain amount of international coordination. And no one country can go it alone. No one country can, can, can solve the problem of climate change by itself. The most important thing at the international level, from my perspective, from the perspective of an economist, is having scientifically credible, transparent procedures and estimates that are based on the best available science that can inform climate policy. It's a challenge because our estimates of the social cost of carbon, those are going to change over time as we learn more. And it's tough to do policy in a world where these understandings are evolving. But we really don't have any choice. We need to get started now. We can't wait till the uncertainty is resolved. Technical tools like integrated assessment models, technical tools like the social cost of carbon can play an important role in coordinating international policies. Not so much by saying this is the one policy you should use, but rather by informing the costs and the benefits of any particular policy so that policies are made efficient. An integrated assessment model is a model that brings together pieces of knowledge from more than one area. In the climate area, what we're talking about is bringing together knowledge or a model of the climate system, that is the geophysical system of temperature and concentrations, and merging that or marrying that with an economic model where the economic model talks about economic growth and development and consumption and investment. Pulling those pieces together or integrating those two pieces makes an integrated assessment model. These are complicated models. They provide a framework for making long-term projections of climate effects and damages from climate change and economic growth and the implications of climate mitigation policies over, uh, over multiple generations. A specific application of integrated assessment models is to compute something called the social cost of carbon. When one assesses climate policies, you can do that in a qualitative way and talk directionally in a qualitative way, but in the end of the day, you need a numerical answer or a quantitative answer. The social cost of carbon is the monetized, net present, discounted value of the damages done from emitting one more ton of carbon today. So we emit a ton of carbon today, it does damages in the future, what's the net present value of those damages? So in the context of certain cost-benefit calculations, you need a specific dollar to assign to emitting, to remitting one less ton of carbon dioxide. Then the question is, okay, so I understand that emitting a ton of carbon dioxide has an externality. What's the value of that externality? What's the dollar value that I would put on that? To, to do that calculation, you're going to need a model. You, 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 you can't just do that in your head. You can't just ask people their opinion and expect to get something that works. You, you need to have a model about how the climate and the economies of the world are going to evolve over a, a very long time scale. Integrated assessment models provide that framework. They're not perfect and there's lots of room for improvement, but you have to have some framework in which you're going to be able to provide this quantitative answer. The question then is, how can we make that calculation credible and transparent? And I think the answer to that is thinking about the social cost of carbon not as a number, but as a process that we compute this number. And the process by which we compute this number, we can then ask questions about credibility and transparency of the process. That process needs to be using the best available science. It needs to have a public face. It needs to be generally interpretable. And it needs to provide an opportunity for public in input, but yet be shielded from political dynamics. Those are big challenges, but I think that we have ways to do that. And actually, the U.S. government is undertaking such a series of steps 
towards having an increasingly transparent and an increasingly credible uh, way for computing the social cost of carbon. Indeed, currently, there's a review by the National Academy of Sciences that's going to provide input to the U.S. government about how it can improve its calculations of the social cost of carbon, and that review is really an important step in the transparency and scientific evolution of this process. One of the most significant and, and, and really dire sets of issues associated with climate change are what's sometimes called abrupt changes. And so I'll, I'll give you an example of an abrupt change. An abrupt change, a large-scale abrupt irreversible change, would be the melting of the West Antarctic ice sheet, which would raise sea levels by several meters. So that can't be reversed. You can't put the ice back there once it's melted, and, it, and the sea levels are up. And, and so that was going, that's going to cause significant damages. Then the question is, how are those damages incorporated, those and other sorts of abrupt changes or irreversible changes going, incorporated into uh, the integrated assessment models that are used for the various climate policy calculations? The answer is, at the moment, some of the models include some of the changes. More of that needs to be done. And the work that needs to be done to inform that, some of that is on the climate science side, the geophysics side. Some of it is on the economic modeling side and understanding what the effects of, the, of these abrupt or irreversible changes actually are. We don't really have a good handle on the time frames. We don't have a good handle on the geophysical mechanisms. We don't have a good handle on the damages they would cause. That's an important part of the work that remains ahead of us. It's really heartening that the managing director has made working on climate change and taking climate change issues into account a new and important and vibrant area within the fund. There's at least two reasons why working in these areas and incorporating this into fund work is important. One is really the more obvious one, which is that climate change is a problem that affects the entire world, and it affects all of the economies in the world in different ways. Having the fund involved in understanding and improving our ability to adapt to climate change and to mitigate climate change at a national level but with an international framework is, a, is very important. The second reason is that the fund has massive expertise in its, ec in its economists and its economics community in terms of thinking about uh, fiscal considerations and thinking about tax policy and in thinking about just the technical workings of government and carrying some of that expertise over to the climate arena and climate policies is very important. Let me elaborate on that just a little bit. In the most recent Paris Agreement, countries are going to deliver, and they have promised to deliver, national contributions to mitigating climate uh, emissions or mitigating, reducing CO2 emissions. There are efficient ways to do that, and there are inefficient ways to do that. Fund economists can help countries understand, among the menu of choices that the countries bring to the table, what the various costs are and what the benefits are, what's an efficient climate policy and what's an inefficient climate policy, what's a good way to spend your money or direct your resources so that we get the mitigation we want. There's one more step, and this is a step that the IMF can play in an important way, which is making sure that policies work together. Policies in one country and policies in another country may or may not work towards the same end when, when working at the same, when, when trying to work together. And the IMF can play an important role in advising countries about unintended consequences of policies as well as efficiencies of policies. IAMs play a role, SCC plays a role, technical advice from the IMF plays a very important role. I mentioned two things that the fund can do, but actually there's really a third. In this entire area of climate and climate change and climate policy, expectations about the future and understanding where we're going and understanding where policy is going plays a really important role. 
If you know that there's going to be demand for renewable resources in the future, you might be willing to invest today in new technologies, drive down the costs, so that those are going to be the technology of the future and your firm can make money in that, in that arena. The IMF, by developing expertise in the area of climate change, in the area of evaluating climate policies, in the area of advising other advising governments about, about efficient policies in the future, can help instill the sense of certainty that is needed, the sense of knowledge of the future, that we are committed to making the changes that we need to in an economically efficient way. And that's an important role for IMF economists as well.